jigs. They're not just for bass and walleyes anymore. <laughs> What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy, and uh, we are back on the water with my good friend, Rich Reinert. Uh, we're gonna be talking about musky jigs today, which is something I know very little about. Uh, I know it's a, it's a very effective way to catch muskies, and I just, I think I've probably been too ADHD and just cast, 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 real, 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 to really slow down and see what these things are capable of. First thing I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna start out with the rod. Okay, Kay. yeah. It's gonna be simple. Guys, basically you take a heavy action flipping stick. Yep. That's all it takes. 710, you know, 710, something like that. Yeah. 710. You know, this is a beast 40. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it's, it, you know, but the beast 40, it's got like 30 pounds of drag on sure. it. Okay. This is fins. 40g 100 pound braid yep it's the size of you know 12 14 pound mono it's small the leader that we're using on this thing is made by leaders and lures uh you know, gene uh down there at leaders and lures it's uh it's got a ball bearing you know to, you know reduce line twist it's got a you know a yep. split you know a split ring that you can you know clip it on your jig on there and that's basically the rig we're using, that's it. It's, it's that simple, nothing fancy. The first jig we use, if you're fishing around sand, this is the only the only jig that we use that we actually are bouncing, just okay. like a walleye jig. This is made by Cougar Baits. Yep. All, basically all these you know jigs are made by Cougar Baits, you know, except for the ones made by Enticer Tackle. But I have found, you know, when the fish are up on sand, which a lot of times in the spring of the year, you'll find fish up on sand and up into the pebbles, the rock that warms up quicker, hold heat. That's where you're gonna find the fish. And again, later in the season, in the fall, when the fish are inactive, they'll lay up on these sand beaches. Mm -hmm. You know, during the summer months, you see all these people running around, swimming at, you know, pick your, pick your lake. Everybody's swimming at a lake. Yep. You know, water attracts people during the summer. But during the fall, late fall fish will crawl up on that stuff because it's warmer than sure. the rest of the water so this type of head okay here i'll let you yeah. do the that head that darter head we use that for hopping so we would cast the jig Just, out okay and basically we would hop it sure. yep. you know a lot of times when you're hopping it you know i'm old school i might move the rod take up my slack let it set maybe shake it hop it let it set, shake it, hop it, you know. Yep. It's just, you're basically hopping it in the sand. And, and you know, I one thing I noticed is, you know, it's it's a single hook, and the hook is quite close to the head, where, you know, some people would think, oh, you got this blade back here, are they gonna be hitting back here? But I would assume they're headshotting most of these. They're sucking it in. Just the whole thing. Just, just like a largemouth bass. Yep. Jigs work, Yep. period, but nobody gives them a chance. Yep. They're not hard. So in this case, this is the one jig that we're hopping. Okay. Okay? We're hopping that jig. All right. Brian, I know you just came back from Eagle Lake. You talked about, you know, how tough it was this yep. year. And you mentioned something about, you know, the crayfish. There's a lot of rusty crayfish showing up in that lake now. Yep. You've got your bait right there. Okay. Yep. you got a bait. I'm going to let you have that. Because if Perfect. you're in that situation, you got the bait. Okay? So the next head we use... Actually, I'm going to head and I'm going to pull both of them. Okay. They're the same head. Okay. They're the same head. One's, sh one's you know, a smaller head. The other one's a bigger head. Yep. I go from hopping a jig to swimming a jig. Sure. And these are basically swimming heads. This here, I can cast it out. I'll take it, hits the water. I'll let it drop to its desired depth, usually a medium to deeper. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say that, I'm, I'm saying roughly you know, between, you know, 10 to 15 feet. Sure. You know, on the edge of a river channel. Um, suspended fish in a yeah. lake. If I'm fishing shallower, I want to fish the smaller head. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's got blades, and what it will do is we'll cast those out, and we swim them. Okay. We're casting them out, 
we start cranking them. Once we they reach the depth we want, we count them down. You know, mentally in your head, you're going 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, and then you go and you start your retrieve. So you'll you'll crank a half a dozen times mm-hmm. initially, and then we'll kill it for a split second. Sure. So basically, what that jig is doing is it's swimming along, it's hopping along, and you're killing it, and it drops. And then boom, you start swimming it again, it pops back up again. Sure. And we do that for three cranks, kill it. And you go back to six cranks, kill it. And you go back to, you know, three cranks, kill it. Yep. But it's constantly doing basically basically how people use beavers. Oh, sure. Yep. Same thing. Yep. yep. But if you're fishing shallower water, 10 to 15, 12 to 15 feet, in a, which is this is the jig I use the most, okay. is this one. For those guys that are fishing, you know, deeper, clear lakes, mm-hmm. I you know, and, and maybe you tell me if I'm wrong, but... You know, back when I was younger, I had to fish Deep Clear Lakes because Tony Rizzo made me. Sure. If I went fishing with Tony Rizzo, we were going to go to Deep Clear Lake. I had to get down. He always told me the magic depth, whence the lake's thermocline, is 18 to 22 feet of water. Sure. On these Deep Clear Lakes. That's where this heavier head will come in. You can see it's got a bait fish color to it. You know, it's got a, you know, chartreuse blade. This one's black and gold. Mm-hmm. It's got a copper blade because I'm fishing this a little bit shallower. Yep. But, you know, you know, medium depth, deeper depth, but we're swimming these heads. Perfect. Okay. okay. So the last jig that, co- that, uh, that, you know, that Cougar makes, you know, Max Kaufman is basically a, uh, it's a, it's a blade runner. Okay. Sure. Yeah. It's got. You know, basically, a head that uh, like an un- almost like an underspin. There you go. It's yeah. an underspin. Yeah, there yeah. you go. It is an underspin. If you look here, it's uh, it's got a willow blade. It's got a big old orange tail. Uh, you know what? We should have been throwing this today. Okay? Probably, yeah. <laughs> um, I notice is that you know even when I pick out my gliders, even my bucktails, the br- on bright days like today. I like golds, I like chartreuse, you know, I like real bright oranges, mm-hmm. okay? This is what that bait is used for. You know, um, I wouldn't really call this a post frontal. We just have a real high pressure system in here. Yeah. And I'm, I'm having a brain lapse. We got up early yep. and we're fishing and I should have pulled this out right away, Yeah. you know? <laughs> Maybe this afternoon. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. You know what? And you're going to fish it. Perfect. Okay. So we, I use an underspin. Same way that I would fish the swimmers, you would just crank the underspin and you just kill it for a split second and let it drop. Yep. And pop this it back is, up. Yep. This is not hard fishing. This is the easiest musky fishing that you will do besides retrieving a bucktail. Sure. The problem is people look at this and they just got no confidence. Trust me when I'm telling you this. These catch fish. There have been times and years when, you know, that this has saved my rear end, you know, as far as looking for fish. So you're, you're basically fishing, you got a head for sand and pebble, you got your swimmer heads when you're fishing the edges of, you know, weed lines or you're fishing the edges of, you know, maybe stumps, edge of the river channel. When, you know, days are tough, this here is an excellent it's one of my favorite choices. I mean, he even gets, I mean, and he can get, he can get really pretty fancy. I mean, yeah. this is a perch pattern. They're really cool looking baits. You know, I, this has got a little bit heavier head. I like the, 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 again, the, you know, the lighter heads, but if you're fishing in lakes, perch or schooling out, you know, out suspended out in the lake, this is a real good choice. Again, you're fishing deeper water. You know, I got orange, kind of like a mustard yellow tail on this mm-hmm. thing. I use this color a lot yep. in the yellow and orange. This is the two colors I probably use the most, you know, depending on where I'm fishing. It, 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 you don't have, it's no rocket scientist. Either you match bait fish, you max crawfish. I have a tendency where I fish with this stuff. I use black and yellow, yellow and orange, black and chartreuse. It's that simple, not hard. You know, black and gold is good, Yep. okay? The other jig that I use an awful lot that right. I'm using for e- eons. What's our last one there? And, and it's and it, this is what really started the jig fishing thing for uh-huh. one of us. This is made by Enticer Tackle. 
this is a it's it's a creature. Okay. If you'll notice the head that we've yep. got here, it's a swimming head. Yeah, sure. I'm just gonna. It's a different type of head. Different type of head there. Um, I think I, if I would have had these with me last week, it was kind of a short thing, mm -hmm. short, yeah, short notice thing. Um, I think you know they would have sucked us in. And when they take this jig, they eat it. They they inhale it. Sure. I've actually watched fish swim up to this jig, sitting on the bottom in this blade, just you know, just sitting there, you know, turning in the water. And I've watched them swim up to it, turn, and like they're looking at it, <laughs> and they just bow. They just yeah. bash it. They suck it in. Sure. You got them. Yep. Game over. You know what I mean? But this, I. I this jig, this this body style was popular back in the 70s. Tony Port and Queso, Spence Petros, all those old time fishing mm -hmm. facts guys, this was the bait that they were fishing. Gene Curtis, you know, uh, well known, you know, musky guide up in Phelps, Wisconsin. Yep. He was the one that made this type of bait. And I think Gene moved to Florida. Dick Moore had picked up where he left off, continued making these. And now Dick is in his 80s, and uh, now Rick Weinberg and his wife Cindy are making these, and it's owned by Enticer Tackle. This same rod, same reel, same line. It's already got a wire leader on yep. the jig for you. It's very simple. Another one of the companies that you can find at the Wisconsin Muskie Expo. But if you look at this, I mean, you got a handful of jigs. Yeah. It isn't really hard. And there's no special, you can't fish them wrong. Right. You know, we're going to fish I, this one the same way. I think like you mentioned that it's, it's not that they won't catch fish. It's just people getting the confidence that they're, that they need to go out and catch the fish. And, uh, you know, hopefully just watching this and listening to uh, Rich talk about it, hopefully that gives you the confidence to go out and at least give it a shot. Um, I know it's it's kind of got me uh, jazzed up as we were talking. We had a really tough week on Eagle Lake, and uh, afterwards we were talking about the prevalence of the crayfish in there, and that we should have been working some of those weed sand flats with the jig instead of burning a bucktail through there or whatever we were doing. There so, they are. Yep, that's awesome. I, I use three colors in this. I use black and chartreuse, black and orange, and I use a yellow with an orange blade. Okay. That's simple, three colors. For guys that are fishing clear water, he makes a silver with nickel. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got some stuff, you know, to suit, you know, the you know the you know the color of the water that you're fishing. Yep. And uh, this one's got a little bit bigger head on it. I use it, you know, when you have a bigger head, it usually it's for faster, you know, low lower light conditions. I'm burning it a little bit quicker. Yep. Whereas this one, I'm a little more stationary. So. All right, folks. Hopefully that will give you a little bit of confidence to try some jig fishing for muskies. I know uh, I'm going to try my best to see if I can get one or two fish doing this. Uh, we are going to get back to fishing. Yep. So I, uh, again, hope you got something from this. If you have any questions about any of this, please leave it in the comments below and I will try to get to them uh, as fast as I can. But uh, until next time, I appreciate every single one of you watching this mess and I'll see you on the next video.